I believe I have the ability um, and the passion <laughs> to be um, a leader in our community. I have been a leader in the community. <laughs> Um, women look to me for a knowledge that I've gained through my experience working with the Mohawk Status Women Council. I worked 10 years in that organization and uh, took the direction from the women in the community of where we go as an organization. And uh, I was a leader, and I feel like I'm a leader in the community, but it's a lead that I take on the advice of women. Um, I always took direction from women in the community because I had a, I was, I was in a position to have a different voice, and I could speak out about things that some people couldn't necessarily speak out against. Um, so I guess what I tried to do as the leader in, in my community was to be the voice for women, for women who couldn't vocalize what they needed to put out there. I have, uh, I have a. My own personal agenda is to see equality for women, and whether it's equality on a bigger national, global, or just in my own home community, I want my daughter to have the same opportunities that every other person would have. I want her to be able to be who she can, uh, which is why I think my work in the women's movement has been so important to me, is because I need this world to be better for her. I don't know if that answers. I find it hard to, to define myself as a leader. I don't see it as a leader. I would call myself uh, a mobilizer or a Quaker shaker kind of. I don't. I don't feel. I guess that's what. I, I guess that's what a leader is doing. It's creating that passion around other women. But I. I feel like I have my skill is not leading women. It's mobilizing women, getting women talking, and being able to. Uh, get women to open up a little more just by sharing. And I think how I do that, or why it's so important for me to do, it's not about how I do it, I guess. It's because I am just one woman. And I can't, I can't, be, I can't be the leader in a, in a movement for a community with my agenda. Because I'm a lesbian. I don't deal with violence. I don't deal with poverty. I have to listen to women. I have to take direction from the women to know, to have that inclusive voice for equality for women. And I guess for me, uh, hearing the stories from other women uh, and using my own experience, whether it was the good stuff, the bad stuff, the yucky stuff, the, the educational, the experience, all of that stuff uh, feeds into who I am and how I approach things. And in Labrador, it's how women are with me and how I approach them. Uh, I guess for me, I never started anything at the Women's Center unless it was a request from the women. I didn't decide the stuff that went there because I, I, was, I was a privileged, at that moment, I was privileged. I was doing well. I had a good life. I had uh, a strong family, strong supports. Um, and success. My daughter was doing well, so I knew. I knew where it was to come from yucky, but I knew where it was to get to somewhere good. And um, hearing from women the things that they needed in the community, that's the things that I went after. That's what led me to do the things. It's the women that came in to sit down and talk to me, but then that's an issue. I fought issues that I didn't, not, not that I didn't agree with, but I didn't understand. I had to fight them by learning and asking questions because it was women. So I may, I still, I don't know the leader piece because I, I feel more women led me and I was just a voice. When I was in high school and saw Joyce Hancock, which is the, she was the Newfoundland president of the advisory council and she was fantastic. I seen her on uh, TV when I was probably 17, getting ready to go to university anyway. and. Uh, She's a cool woman, and that, but that was it, and went on from there, and I always wanted to do the helping field, so I wanted to be the social worker, I wanted to do that. Uh, went to university, started that in my, uh, between a college and a university time, I, I got pregnant, that's when my daughter came into play, <laughs> and uh, I was in university doing, trying to get into the social work program, and took a women's studies course, and realized at that moment that, uh, well, I had been in a relationship that fell apart, that her dad walked away from her, and 
that was it. There was no, and I took this women's studies course, and it was a whole other, I mean, I never, I never realized there was inequality. I grew up in Labrador City, which was a very privileged community in Labrador, and we had money, there was the competition. We didn't go hungry at night. I know there was families in Labrador City that did, but we didn't see them because we were so isolated. Mm. So when I went to university and, and took on that women's studies course, I think it was the very first women's studies course, and uh, wow, <laughs> this is really cool. This is where this is where I need to go to ensure that my daughter has a full, productive life. You know, sometimes it's not about inspiring women because I think women in Labrador are uh, they're ready to fight. They're ready to stand up for themselves. They're tired of not being able to stand up for themselves. Uh, the biggest thing. For women in Labrador is that they have too many other bigger issues to deal with that uh, for a woman to be able to stand up and say no more violence means that she has to take herself out of a position or out of a place where uh, she has to stop caring about the things that are important because there's too many women in our communities that are dealing with violence, that are dealing with poverty and, and child youth and family services issues or justice issues and how are they supposed to fight for equality for women when they're trying to just survive in the day-to-day -day living in Labrador. And in a lot of women the only thing they could say was what if the dam breaks because they don't understand anything bigger than that and their only concern is their family. Labrador is very diverse in its culture. It's got uh, I guess there's three Aboriginal groups there. So there's the Innu, uh, with Innu Nation, Nunatuavut, so Inuit from the southern coast, and Inuit from the north coast, which is Nunatsiavut. Uh, and there is so much uniqueness and diversity that uh, uh, every day is a new learning experience. We can, but we have, a lot of, we have a lot of strong Aboriginal women who are leaders in our communities. And uh, I think we're doing a very, uh, it's very difficult to reach out and connect all the women. So, uh, yes, we are very unique, and yes, we are very awesome women from Labrador. Food. food. We always offered food and free food. Um, we did everything we could through our work. Through through, uh, we did it for free. I don't remember charging women for anything, uh, and I really fought that. And I think that that. Uh, that's really important in a community where people are struggling with their struggling with income and prices of food and everything is constantly going up and uh, and in our, and our income support never goes up so the women who are struggling are continuously struggling because no one is setting the stage for them to advance and to go somewhere different always open space open comfortable non-judgmental space with food and ask women Ask women what they're feeling, what they're experiencing, and don't invite them in so you can tell them something. Women need to have their own voice. I have my own voice. I don't mind standing up in a room and telling people what I think. But there are women out there who don't feel that comfortable. And we, as women leaders, have an obligation to help women. If they can't do it right now for themselves, not only do we have to carry that voice for them, but we have to help them empower themselves so that they can gain that voice. Um, Labrador is very unique. It's completely separate from Newfoundland. Uh, when people talk about Newfoundland and Labrador, they make it like it's one place. People outside of Labrador need to recognize that the decisions that get made for Labrador don't get made within Labrador. Uh, yes, they may do a consultation process. Yes, they may speak to this person or that person or this group and that group, but the decisions for Labrador get made outside of Labrador. Uh, I'm sure some of the decisions and some of the, but our provincial government and our federal government, is, it's a top-down approach and that's how, that's how that happens. A major way, uh, one thing that bothers me that happens in our province and I guess probably everywhere that, um, and I just did it, I called, uh, the, I, I talked about Aboriginal groups. We've got two Aboriginal groups now that are in self-government. And when the government talks about uh, the consultation process or the whatever they're doing, it's never in partnership. It's always talking to the Aboriginal groups in Labrador. 
you need to talk to the governments within Labrador. Right? Our community has always been strong. Our community is a community that comes together. They're used to working with very little. Labrador, and not just our community, Happy Valley Gooseberry, I'm talking about all of Labrador. I mean, you've got uh, 27 communities or 37 communities across Labrador in a huge geographical area. And uh, most of it is not accessible. Six of the communities on the North Coast are not accessible at all, uh, only by water and by air. Uh, Mud Lake is inaccessible three or four months out of the year because it's, you can only get there by boat, you know. So, uh, so people have survived for years and years and years before government came in, and they will survive years and years after, right? We have come, we've learned from the Aboriginal people there how to be and how to survive and how to come together to help one another, I think. I see my reason for being in this fight even stronger as time goes on. As my daughter gets older and uh, my daughter becomes a young woman and hopefully she don't have to face the struggles that many of us faced growing up. Uh, but, I mean, she's, she's only a young woman now and I see the struggles and how, it, how it's happening and the similarities of the things that happened when I was young. So, uh, Labrador is not changing fast enough for me and Canada is not changing at all. So, yeah, three years of time, I'll be still involved in the